Hey Sirius XM, it's Halsey, and I'm going to be taking you through some of my favorite songs. Are you ready for my mixtape? What is a song of mine that I love to perform and why? I think right now it's Lighthouse, that's my favorite song to play. I've been performing it all summer on the Love & Power Tour, and it's my favorite song because it happens about halfway through the set, and it's usually the moment where all of my like anxiety and my nervousness and my stage fright kind of starts to settle down. I've gotten to know the crowd, I've gotten to like see what kind of vibe they are, are they a crowd that's gonna cheer, are they gonna jump, are they just like vibing with their drinks, like what am I getting myself into tonight? And at the end of the song I pick up a bass and I play the bass outro and there's no vocals and I just kind of lose myself uh, in the bass line. And it's a really cool part of the set because it's the only part of the set that features somebody else's vocals. Um, and you can hear Trent Reznor singing the refrain from Lighthouse, so I kind of just lose myself in his voice and um, play away. And then when I come to at the end of the song, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to finish this set. What is a song that I can't believe I know all of the words to? <sighs> Honestly, there's probably a lot of them. Uh, but the first one that comes to mind is Grills by Nelly and Paul Wall. Um, I don't know why I know every word of that song. I feel like probably when I was in like elementary school or something, somebody, it was like a very popular song and it was like cool to know all the words to it. But obviously this is before like music on demand. So I used to just wait for it to come on the radio or come on, the music video would come on TV and I would sit and write down all of the lyrics until I had them all written and then I could memorize them. Um, but yeah, I know every word to Grills by Nellie and Paul Wall. And Paul Wall actually made me a grill once. It was really cool. Okay, name a song that I know none of the words to. That's tough because I feel like if I know a song then I know some of the words to it, but not none of the words, but a song that I pretty much don't know any words to has got to be like the Macarena or something. Because I'll, I'll, I just know it goes Macarena, 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 Hey Macarena. That's it. That's all I know. What is a song that I love to end my performances with? Gotta be without me. I mean, it's just the moment. I barely even have to sing that song. I just like hold the mic out and the crowd just sings it for me and they sing it so loud that I pretty much lose my hearing by, by the end of the show. But it's kind of a nice reprieve because I do it last and my shows are sometimes like two hours long and I don't stop singing the whole time. So when I get to without me sometimes, I just let the crowd sing it and I'm like, this is great, I can rest. I can relax, and then I come back in and just rip that last chorus. Also, we always do like confetti and fireworks and stuff during that song, so it's like a super fun moment where I'm like, aha, I've got all these tricks on my sleeve that you didn't know about. Definitely the best encore song. Name a song that reminds you of your childhood or your youth. <sighs> I Honestly, it's gotta be anything by Avril Lavigne. Like Skater Boy, Complicated, just pretty much anything off that record, which is incredible because it came out in 2002, which means I was eight. Um, but it was such a formative record for me and I listened to it all the time. I remember like, jumping on my couch um, with the CD in the CD player, like listening to Skater Boy, like in my pajamas when I was like eight and my mom being like, get off the couch, you have to go to bed. Um, also, I wasn't eight, I was six, which just makes it even more impressive, I think, that I was rocking out to Skater Boy. Um, it's also a really memorable song for me because it was the first time that somebody ever told me that I had a good voice. Um, I think I was probably like six or seven years old and I was driving in the car with my parents to go get ice cream. My little brother was like a baby, he was in the car seat next to me and I was singing along to Skater Boy on the radio. And I'll never forget my mom tapped my dad on the shoulder and she turned to him and she was like, Chris, she sounds good. She can kind of like sing. And I remember being like, what? I can sing? Uh, and then I'm sure that my mom like really regretted saying that because then just would never stop singing ever again from that point on, just hoping that somebody would tell me I was good again. And I'm still doing that. And I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me I'm good. Name a song that reminds you of someone special. Okay, definitely can't keep my eyes off of you. Um, either the Lauren Hill version or the Frankie Valley version, doesn't really matter, I love both of them. And the reason I love that song so much is because when I was pregnant with my son Ender, uh, I would drive around in the car and I would put either version of that song on and I would sing it to him in my belly. Uh, and then when he was born, 
uh, we'd play it and it would always calm him down. So I guess he could remember that I used to sing it to him. But it was funny because, you know, the main part of the song is, I love you, baby. And I was singing to my baby. So that song always reminds me of Ender. When I think of the Love and Power tour, the first song that comes to mind, I think is probably I'm Not a Woman, I'm a God. Because it was the first single that we put out off of the album. And it's such a cool moment in the show. And I love watching people sing it and sing along to it and seeing the different ways that it affects them. One of the things I do before I go on stage every night is I watch like a couple minutes of No Doubt, uh, the Tragic Kingdom tour live at the Forum. And uh, I just love watching Gwen Stefani on stage, especially in the No Doubt era. It's like really inspiring to me and always gets me excited to go on stage. And my favorite moment of the whole set is when she starts Just a Girl and she makes all the men in the audience sing it. And it's really, really funny because she has the whole crowd of guys going, I'm just a girl. And uh, I just always think about that moment when I'm performing Woman God because I always just have like a crowd full of all different types of people. And sometimes like, sometimes it's like dads and boyfriends and stuff who are like, I am not a woman, I'm a God. And I'm like, go off, you are, go off King. When I think of the album Badlands, the first song that comes to mind is probably Gasoline um, because it's a my favorite song on the album and there's a really cool story behind that song. Um, I think most people it's probably their favorite song on the album, but I had finished the album and it was 15 tracks and I had delivered it to my label and I was like, this is my debut album, it's all done, it's ready to go. And they were like, are you sure? And I was like, yes. And they were like, are you positive? And I was like, I've never been more positive about anything in my life. And then I got in the studio and I wrote Gasoline and I sent it to my label and I said, we have to add this song to the album. And they said, you can't, it's done. And I said, no, we have to. It's, we're adding it to the album. Uh, eventually I convinced them to, and I'm so glad that I did because it is a B-side on the deluxe edition of the album, and today it's double platinum, which is pretty crazy. When I think of the album Manic, the first song that comes to mind is definitely Clementine. I think it's really hard for like one song to really like fully encapsulate Manic because it's made of like so many different genres, you know? There's like songs that are just all across the board, like all over the place. There's not like one real like theme or one like theme song of the album, you know? But I think the first one that comes to mind is definitely Clementine because that was kind of the moment in the studio where the record started coming together, where I realized that I could really see this vision for this like whimsical kind of childlike, all over the place, technicolor, album about me and my relationship with my mental health and it was one of the coolest songs I've ever written mostly because of the call and response part so the I don't need anyone and I don't need anyone kind of like the two versions of my voice talking to each other and singing to each other and that was the moment where I was like oh yeah this is definitely an album called Manic for sure. So Good is just a really special song to me for a lot of reasons. You know, when I started writing my last album, If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power, I was um, newly in a relationship and I was, you know, a couple months away from being, being pregnant and then the journey of the album kind of just started to change and evolve as I got pregnant and was going through that journey and you know that re that record is very very much about like me and my experience and um, what I was going through internally and you know my partner Alev um, he gets a couple of really good moments on the album but he never really kind of gets the, uh, the like origin story song um, and so it was really nice to put so good together because I was just thinking about how I wanted to write like a very nice and sweet and wholesome song um, about him and you know the last album was just really kind of like dark and provocative and uh, it was just a, just a really kind of tortured record I guess in a way so there wasn't really place on it for the type of song that I wanted to write for him uh, sonically um, so then I you know this, this song kind of just like, I think it's, it's a true Halsey love song in the sense that, you know, it can never be just a love song. There's always gotta be like a twist or something. And I think, you know, the big twist in So Good comes at the end of the record when you realize that all the things that I was fantasizing about or, you know, all of the situations I was creating in my head were really just untrue. And I just had to kind of like relax and let life do its thing and 
bring us together in the way that the universe intended to. Um, I just love it so much. And, you know, I talk about my best friend Maria in the song, which is really cool. I love naming people by name in records. It's like one of my favorite things to do because it just makes it so conversational. Um, and I remember the first time that I played the song for him and I was like, um, this is about you. And uh, he was like, just totally shocked and like moved to tears and you know we're both writers so we write stuff for each other all the time but this just felt really different you know what I mean it's like a different thing like a permanent thing like I was putting out into the world this this story like I was finally ready to tell everybody like how it all went down and um how much it means to me and that just felt so like infinite and permanent and amazing I used to be really superstitious, like if I wrote about something that it was immediately going to become a disaster. Um, but I've, I've kind of grown out of feeling that way. Um, and now I feel like a, a responsibility and also like just really encouraged to write about the good things in my life too. Um, to balance out, balance out a lot of writing about the bad. Uh, and I feel really lucky and really blessed that I have good things to write about. When you say love song, what song comes to mind? Ooh, gotta be Love Song by Sarah Barry Ellis. Um, obviously just because it's called Love Song, but also because the story behind the record, or at least the rumor and the folklore behind the record is really cool. Um, you know, Sarah's like an unbelievable songwriter. She was actually one of my first like songwriting idols um, when I first started writing music. And I love a song that's a double entendre. I love a song that sounds like you're singing to someone, but really you're singing about something completely else entirely. And it's one of the best love songs of all time, and it's not even about love, it's about capitalism. <laughs> when you say Calvin Harris, what song comes to mind? Easily Slide. Easily Slide. Um, I remember where I was the first time that I heard that song. Um, I was wrapping up some music videos for the Hopeless Fountain Kingdom album cycle, and it was one of those moments where like all of your friends start texting you when the song drops and they're like, you gotta hear this, you gotta hear this, you gotta hear this. And everyone's just freaking out. And like, I love when music is a moment like that. Like when a song drops and like the world stops for a second and like you and all of your friends who love the same thing are just like, you have to almost like pull the car over and sit down and pull it up and just like listen to it. And I remember the first time I heard it, I was just like, I thought it was just such brilliant and creative songwriting and the song was just so unique and it has like, I think really sustained itself as one of like the coolest songs ever made. When you say Anthem, what song comes to mind? Anthem by Good Charlotte. I mean, I burnt that CD into the ground. Um, my family used to drive like five hours to Boston every summer to see my grandmother. And I think that I listened to that CD. It's I think it's on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, but um, when I would listen to that CD on the ride, I would listen to it just pretty much on repeat for like five hours straight in my Walkman. Um, I'm aging myself here, but in my Walkman. Um, but yeah, I said, this is the anthem, throw your damn hands up, you know? When we say country, what song comes to mind? Carrie Underwood, Before He Cheats. That song is one of the best songs ever made. It is just unbelievable, phenomenal record. Um, if I could take 10 songs with me into like a capsule, on a deserted island before he cheats would be one of them and it actually inspired a song on my album manic you should be sad um and you know i kind of wanted to dabble with that kind of like bratty femme fatale style of country um except that my song was more like a after he cheats instead of a before he cheats when i say tv show theme song what comes to mind um the succession theme hands down i think it's really really cool how they incorporate it as a motif through all the episodes and it kind of like informs you emotionally that something very important and very serious is about to happen without them having to actually tell you. And I just think that that's such a cool choice and it's just such smart um, filmmaking. Guys, I'm Halsey. I hope you enjoyed listening to my mixtape and all of my super, super random choices and responses to all those songs. I hope you're loving So Good on Sirius XM and I hope you're loving listening to Stay With Me with Calvin Harris for and Justin Timberlake. And you can catch my small stage series performance on September 20th in Philadelphia, only on Sirius XM.